الحمد لله الحمد لله علي ذات عظيم الصفات سمي السمات كبير الشان جليل القدر في عندك مطاع من جلي البرهان فخيم الاسم غزير العلم وسيء الحلم كثير الغفران جميل الثناء جزيل العطاء مجيب الدعاء عميم الإحسان سريع الحساب شديد العقاب أليم العذاب عزيز السلطان ونشد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له في الخلق والأمر ونشد أن محمد عبده ورسوله فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أفمن كان مؤمنا كمن كان فاسقا لا يستهون أما الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم جنات المأوى نزلا بما كانوا يعملون وأما الذين فسقوا فمأواهم النار كلما أرادوا أن يخرجوا منها وعيدوا فيها وقيل لهم ذوقوا عذاب النار الذي كنتم به تكذبون وقال الله تعالى في مقام آخر ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحديث روي عن النبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كل أمة معافى إلا المهاجرون إلا المجاهرون أو كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الأمور محتتاتها وكل محتتة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد Respected brothers and sisters in Islam We have passed by the month of Ramadan where in the month of Ramadan we had a boost of Iman we were fasting during the day. We were standing before Allah during the night. It was an easy and a simple way of gaining access to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was a time where to reach out to Allah was much more easier than it is now after the month of Ramadan. We look at people in our own community, in our own society, and we can see that what was the effect of Ramadan? Look at right now, look at the Jummah hall right now. There are patches. Whereas in the month of Ramadan, you will not see patches at the beginning of the khutbah. So you see that after in Ramadan and after Ramadan, people change. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order to guide mankind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a system in place. Because what happens is that times, times come around where we are focused and there are times that we are not focused. We tend to slip away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something that has been happening throughout mankind, throughout the times of history. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a system in place that when people would go far away from Allah, Allah would send a prophet. And this prophet would come, he would explain people, teach people, guide them towards the right path, and then this prophet would go away. People will turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will send another prophet and another prophet and another prophet. And this continued to go on. This process continued until the time came where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He sent our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this world and He closed the doors of prophethood. That this is the final prophet ever to come in this world. And then after that, of course, as we all know, that we have temptations. We are human beings. So what happens is that a per the prophets came, explained once again to the people. They left, people would go far away from deen. Some were close to deen, some were close to the book of Allah, the teachings of their respected prophets, and some would go far away from, from the teachings of their prophets. Now in a time when we don't have Rasulullah sallallahu of course, the final prophet passed away so many hundreds of years ago. Now, what do we do now? We are in a time where, and we are in a circle, our circumstances are such that we are always challenged time after time. 
Because we are human beings. We're not like the malaika. We always are tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in Surah Al-Mulk, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتِ وَالْحَيَاةِ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Allah has created life and death. Why? So that He can see which of you are doing are, are good in achieving closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which of you are the best in achieving good deeds. Now while we are living in this life and we have challenges, of course the challenge that we have also with us is that we are human beings. With us we have desires and we have a will and we have obligations. And because when you look at the malaika, the malaika only have obligations. They have no desires. That's why you see the malaika, they do exactly as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered them to do. But with us as human beings, we have obligations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those obligations are manifest and they are, they are present in the book of Allah and in the, in the, the prophetic traditions in the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But at the same time, we have wills and we have desires. And time after time, again and again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He puts us through this test. Shaitan comes in front of us. The book of Allah comes in front of us. And we are, we are put in a situation that we have to choose between Allah and Shaitan. Again and again, time after time, whether it is individually, whether it's regards to our family, whether it is socially, time after time we are tested. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then talks about this in the Quran, that there are those people who have Iman. They stay away from Shaitan. When they are tested, they hold on to the book of Allah in the, in the, in the ahadith of the Prophet peace be upon him. But there are those who then they do commit sins. They do take the path of shaitan and they become far and they become distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah He talks about this in Surah Sajda. He says, Allah is simply saying here in this verse that a person who is a believer and a person who goes far away from Allah, a person who commits sins, these two people cannot be alike. These two people cannot be alike. A person who knows, a person who does not know, they cannot be alike. قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ A person who knows, a person who does not know, they cannot be equal. A person who is a sinner, and a person who does not commit sins, they cannot be equal either. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further on in the same verse, what does He say? He says, أَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَلَهُمْ جَنَّاتُ الْمَأْوَى those who do righteous deeds, they will enter into Jannah. Those who do, those who do, um, he says, Nuzulam bima kanyamanur wa amma ladina fasaku fama awahum wana. Those who commit sins, those who commit sins, Allah says that their final abode will be what? The fire of Jahannam. Kullama araju an yakhruju minha uridu fiha. That while they will be in the state, and while they will be in Jahannam. Allah said that they will try to come out. Whenever they intend to come out of the fire of Jahannam, fiha. They will be pushed and shoved back into the fire of Jahannam. Why? Because they commit the sins. So that's why we said, brothers and sisters, the month of Ramadan is over. Yet our contract with Allah, the agreement that we make with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, is not over. From the day we have come into this world to the day we pass away, whether it is the month of Ramadan or not, it is our obligation that we fulfill and uphold the teachings of Allah and we stay away and we, we refrain <coughs> from sinning. Now when you look at the concept of sinning in Islam, the concept of sinning in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He talks about this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talks about this. Because people, they begin to ask questions that we are human beings. We're gonna make mistakes. We're gonna have shortcomings. So what do we do? Do we retry to, do we remain perfect? And the, the answer to that question is that we cannot stay perfect. We are human beings. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says very clearly in the, in the hadith, he says, Every person will commit sins. Every person will commit sins. Every person will have shortcomings. It can be the most pious person in the community or the person who is the most far away from Allah in the community. Every person will commit sins. And so no person
person is perfect. And this is what happens in our community, in our society. That we see a person who comes to a masjid and we say that, look, he's committing a sin. Remember, each one of us, we are weak. Each one of us, we are going to commit sins. But Prophet ﷺ, he also says in the same hadith, that وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِنَ التَّوَّابُونَ The best of you who commit sins are those who make repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the question, if the question is, that am I supposed to remain perfect? The answer is no, you cannot stay perfect. You can try your do, you can do your best to strike, to stay close to the teaching of Allah, but a person cannot remain perfect. But then the question is that then if we cannot stay perfect, and this is how Allah has created us, why do we commit sins then? How, why do we commit sins? And there are two reasons why we commit sins. First of all is that we have been created weak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has created us weak. Which means is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in such a way that time after time, again and again, we forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's very easy to forget about Allah. When you get busy in your job, when you get indulged with your family, when you are here and when you are there, it's easy for a person to forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, we have been created in such a way that we forget about Allah so easily and very, very quickly also. I mean, imagine how many times does it happen that we go to a graveyard to bury someone. And while we are at the graveyard, we're thinking about something else. We leave the graveyard and we're laughing and we are giggling. We leave the graveyard and guess what happens? As soon as we come back home, we're back to the same normal state. Whereas you look at people like Uthman radiallahu that when he would walk, when he would cross by a graveyard, he would, re he would cry and cry and cry. That his beard would become wet. This is what their state, when they would just cross the graveyard. What happens to us? Why are we like this? Because we tend to forget about Allah very, very quickly. This is how we are. So first of all is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us weak. But that does not mean that if Allah made us weak, that we're going to continue to commit sins also. Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us weak, there are temptations, there are desires, but there are ways to come out of that temptation and desire also. And that is manifest and clearly, um, you know, they are transparent and they are present in the Quran everywhere. But then what is the second reason that we commit sins? It is because shaitan is with us all the time. And shaitan is always attacking our iman. Again and again, again and again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He talks about shaitan in the Quran. That shaitan has made an oath, he has taken an oath. That la'atiyannahum, Allah says in Surah Al-A'raf, ثُمَّ لَآتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ I will attack a person from, from in front. وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ I will attack him from behind. وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ I will attack him from his right side, I will attack him from his left side. Meaning that shaitan is going to use his, his full force to attack a person's iman. And not just once. Shaitan is not such that he gives up. You know today when we try to do something, we give up very quickly. We fail once, we give up. We try to do it again, we fail twice, we give up altogether. Shaitan never gives up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Nas, a surah that even the child in our own community, a, ch a small child, he will know the surah. But what do we recite in the surah? Allah says, He says, that Allah says min sharril waswas that we are seeking repentance, we are seeking the protection of Allah from shaitan who does what? Who whispers in our hearts. He tries to deviate us. He tries to misguide us. And subhanAllah, you look at this word al waswas you see that there is a repetition in the words also. Alladhi yuwaswisu There is a repetition in the letters here. Allah says, Yuwaswisu is spelled out as wawseen, wawseen. There is a repetition in the letters, implying that when shaitan comes and he whispers, he continues to whisper. He repeats his whispering in a person's heart. And not only that, but he never gives up, but Allah says he is Al-Khannas. Al-Khannas means that he continues to come and attack the person's Iman. He takes a step back when a person, when he sees that a person's heart is remembering Allah, he takes a step back. And then he comes back again to attack a person's Iman. And he puts those doubts in a person's heart. And then he moves back. 
And then again he comes back. And this word al khanas is like the word Wahhab. This word khanas is like the word Wahhab. Wahhab is what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the attributes of Allah that it signifies that Allah, He does not only give once, He continues to give. In the same exact way, Shaitan continues to attack the person's Iman. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has made easy for us. He has made it easy for us to protect ourselves from Shaitan by how He says, That Allah said that Shaitan, He comes and He puts His whispers into the chest of a person. Fi sudur in nas. He never said fi qulub in nas. Why? Because the example that has been given here in this verse, that some of the ulama they give this example, that imagine there is a castle. Imagine there is a castle. And around this castle, there is a huge wall that surrounds this castle, protects this castle. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, what he's trying to imply is that shaitan is outside these walls. Shaitan does not even have access to the castle because why? Because first he needs to get through these walls. But what happens is that if the gates and the doors of these, if the doors of these gates are open, Shaitan will get through the wall. He will get through the boundary and then he will come and he will attack the castle. In the same exact way, our heart, which Shaitan does not have access to, Allah said that it is in the chest of a person. Allah has only given access to shaitan to the chest of a person. But if a, but if a person, he goes so far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this person indirectly and unintentionally, he opens up his chest and he is the one who grants access to shaitan to his heart. That is when shaitan comes and he deviates a person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept shaitan away from us. Yet, we look in our own life. Shaitan has such an effect in our own life. What does that mean? That it is us who have brought Shaitan close to us. And how does that happen? It's because we have continued to commit sins. Over and over again, Shaitan puts those whispers, we act upon those whispers, it becomes a sin, and Shaitan becomes closer and closer to us. So that's why it is so important. It is so important that we need to stay away from sins. We need to stay away from sins. The next question is, and the next thing that I like to mention is that when there is the concept of, of a sin, a sinning in Islam, it is there. But then, of course, we all know that there are some major sins and there are some minor sins. What are considered as major sins? What are considered as some minor sins? According to some Sahaba radiallahu anhu, there is no such thing called a minor sin. There's only major sins in Islam. And today there are major sins that we are doing in our own life which we tend to very, take it very, very lightly. Making fun of one another, that is considered as a major sin in Islam. Breaking someone's heart, that is considered as a major sin in Islam. Lying, lying is considered as a major sin in Islam. To the, even to the extent that I remember I talked about this one time in the Khadra here, here at the Masjid, that even when it comes to lying, we're not talking about joking, we're not talking about, you know, you know, a lot of times what happens is that people, they lie to their children and they don't even realize that they're lying. How do they do that? That if you do this, you know, you come down, you know, the kids, what they do is that sometimes they are, they're, they're standing upon something. And what do we do? What do we say to them? If you come down and, or if you don't do this, I'll give you a candy. And if you don't give them a candy, is that considered as what? Is that just considered as... I just, I was just saying something to them to, for them to come down or to stop them from doing something that is considered as lying in Islam. Even though you may be telling your children to do something and I'll give you something back, that is considered as lying if you don't fulfill your promise. Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi, he has a very strict criteria of accepting a hadith in his own book. It said that one time Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi, he went somewhere to go and learn hadith from a person who had a who had known a hadith and the chain between him and the Prophet was very short. Imam Bukhari went to go learn hadith from that person. When he went to go learn hadith from that person, he said that this person he had a horse or he had a donkey. And what did he do to that horse or his donkey? He said, you know, he, he gave a gesture, a hand gesture, by saying, Come close and I will give you this food. Well, as soon as the animal came close, this person, he took the bag of food and he put it on the side and he got a hold of the animal and he tied him up. When Imam Bukhari he saw this, he walked away and he began to leave. This person
person ran, ran back after Imam Bukhari saying that I was here, you came here to learn hadith from me, why don't you learn hadith? He said that no, I cannot learn hadith from you anymore because even though you said and you gave a hand gesture to the animal that if you come close, I'll give you this food and you did not give him the food when he came close, he says you are a liar. He clearly said you are a liar, you lied to this animal. So that's why it is so important that there are so many things that we do. That's why according to some ulama, they say that any kind of sin, any kind of sin that is mentioned in the Quran, it is considered as a major sin. And when we commit a major sin, we tend, our heart becomes blackened. Our heart becomes blackened. And when the heart becomes black, over and over again, first the heart is clean. Then it begins to have these spots, these black black dots on these on this heart. When, uh, and as a person, he continues to commit sin. This heart becomes completely black. That it cannot listen. It cannot. It cannot even digest when someone tells this person that you are doing wrong, and he becomes very rebellious and he becomes very defensive and offensive. That is a sign that his heart is black. Why? Because now he cannot even listen to the teaching of Allah. He cannot even listen to the hadith of Rasulullah wasallam. So that's why it is very, very important that there are so many things that we commit. I don't have the time to get into all of that, but we need to look at the Quran. We need to look at the, 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 the hadith of Rasulullah wasallam. And when we commit sins through our salat, through our recitation of the Quran, and through our dhikr and our tilawah of the Quran, these major sins will not be wiped out of our record. The only way we can make repentance and the only way these major sins can be wiped out of our account is when we make sincere tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why let us take this very, very seriously inshallah. We have to take this very, very seriously. When we break an order of Allah, Allah gets upset. Imagine when our own kids, when they do something which we tell them not to do, how upset do we get? Imagine Allah has given us everything. Everything that we have in our life, Allah has given it to us. Yet we continue to sin. How do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feels? Ask yourself this question. May Allah give us the ability. Barakallahu ala wa lakum fil Quran azim. Wa nafa'na wa iyaakum la yadim wa dhikr al-hakim. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa li sa'il muslimin fa astaghfiru inna huwa al-ghafur rahim. الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد. People have several questions and sometimes you know people they go through struggles in their life. This is what life is all about. Sometimes there are good times, sometimes there are struggles. This is what life is all about. Sometimes, you know, a person, there are so many struggles that a person he loses hope in Allah. Sometimes times are so good that he forgets about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also. But then the question is that what are the effects of sin? What are the effects of sin? First of all, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in a hadith, that when a person he commits sins and he is very persistent in commit, committing sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he decreases his provision. He decreases his provision. Now when a person his his provision is decreased, it doesn't naturally it doesn't actually mean that his wealth it decreases. That actually has one meaning, but it could also mean that a person he may lose his job. Or there may be a huge expense that he was not even expecting. That that may come his way. Nonetheless, one of the things that what happens in our life is that when we see a decrease in our wealth or when we financially become, you know, when we struggle, we tend to feel like there is something going on in our life. What we, and we don't think is that this may be the consequences of our sinning. And what happens, I remember there was a scholar who said something very, very amazing. I cannot even forget about that. He said that when, he says that when, he says that when a person, he says when you look at, when you look at a person, he may do something over and over again, committing sin after sin, sin after sin, sin after sin. He does not realize it. But what happens is that a time will come that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will bring such a very tragic, it may be tragic, it may be very, very bad news, something that hits him very, very hard in his life, he may lose everything, something that happens very dramatic in his life. And a person begins to sit there and he says, so he begins to ask himself, why did this happen in my life? Whereas he does not realize it, that there are so many days that he committed sins, 
and they have all been accumulated and they come and they hold a person accountable. That's why it's very, very important that if there is a decrease in our wealth, let's look at our, let's look at our way of habit. If we are sinning, that is one effect of sins. Another effect of sins is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes things difficult for us. When a person, he disconnects himself between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah disconnects between him and the people in his own community. When I go home, you know, this is something that happens a lot. You have a lot of people complaining in the community, in the society. I don't get along with my children. I don't get along with my family members. Why? Because when a person, he continues to sin, he continues to sin and sin and sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he disconnects himself between, there's a disconnection between him and Allah. Allah, he <coughs> severs the relationship between him and everyone else in his own community. So that's why it's very, very important that if there is an issue that we cannot get along with anyone in our community, it is probably because we are sinning so much. Another effect of sins, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he takes away knowledge. How many times does it happen that we are businessmen? We may, we, we may have a job, we don't forget. There may be a formula, if there's a scientist, he does not forget a formula. If there's a person who's an IT person, he does not forget a code. But what happens is that a person today, he will memorize a surah, and two weeks after that, he will forget it. Why? Because that is the effects of sinning. That's why Imam Shafi, he came to his own teacher, Waqi. He says, I complained to my own teacher about a weak memory. What did he say? That I give you advice that you have to stay away from sinning. Why? Because knowledge of Quran and Sunnah is a nur in a life of Allah. And the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not given to a sinful person. So that's why it is so important. There are so many effects of sins. I don't have the time now to wrap up my khutbah right now. But wallahi, there are so many effects of sins. And sins can destroy our life. Allah, He snatches the barakah away from our life. That means that there is no barakah left in our wealth. There is no barakah left in our family. There is no barakah left in our life. Allah makes everything difficult for a person. Allah makes subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes everything very hard for that person. Something that a person could do in his life very, very easily, now it becomes extremely difficult for him. Why? Because that is the, that is the effect of sinning. Not only that, when a person, he continues to go far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what happens, this is what sinning does. That when a person, he does the slightest amount of sin, he feels like, you know what, it is nothing. It is nothing. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's sitting with the Sahaba. And what did he say to the Sahaba? That right now, right now, there are things that you would do, and you think that the wrath of Allah will come upon you. But there will come a time in my ummah that they will sin. They will sin, and those sins that you feel that the wrath of Allah will come upon you, they will take it very, very lightly. This is the time that we are going through right now. We sin, how many times do we sin? Knowingly, unknowingly, respect your brothers and sisters. When you sin, and when we sin, remember, remember and remember. It is not that sin that we just brush away, like there's a fly and you let go of it, and you just brush it away. You brush it away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about that sin. When sins accumulate, they come in the shape of something very, very terrible. So that's why, keep in mind, every single time we sin, small sin, major sin, any type of sin, there will be consequences. Remember that, there will be consequences. The consequences may come today, they may come tomorrow, but they will come. So that's why, always remember, that if you are ready to suffer the consequences, then you commit the sin. And if you are not ready to come to suffer, if you're not ready to suffer the consequences, don't commit the sin. Every time you're about to sin, think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say to yourself, Allah, Yusuf alayhi salam, he is asked to come and commit zina. What does he do? What does he do? He says, Ma'ad Allah. That's all he does. And that was a, that was easy and sufficient for him to run away, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the strength to stay away from the sin. That is very, very important. Whenever we are about to commit the sin, imagine, just imagine, that today we may be committing the sin. No one may be watching, but on the day of judgment, on the day of judgment, our sins will be exposed. Our sins will be exposed. Today, the sins that we are hiding, we are committing and we are hiding about it. If those sins were exposed today in our own society, we will not even have the will. We will not even have the strength to show our face to someone else. Imagine those sins will be exposed before Allah on the Day of Judgment. 
So that's why, think about it. Think about it. every time you're about to commit a sin, think about it. The last thing I will mention is, I know I'm over time. One more thing I want to mention in regards to sinning, which is very, very important. Today what happens, and this is something that is very, very despised, very, very much disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are so weak that sometimes even when we commit sins, we boast about the sins. We commit the sin, we boast about the sin. This happens a lot within, you know, social circles. When a, when a person is trying to fit in socially with a group, what does he do? He may commit a sin, and then he will go and he will boast about it. Oh, I did this, and I did this. And then the people socially in his circle, or her circle, what they will say? Oh wow, what a great job, you're so awesome, you're so cool. This is what happens. Prophet ﷺ, he said that if there is one person who is the most despised by anyone is the person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commits a sin at night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers that sin, but he is the person who goes and he exposes his sin. This person is very much despised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, very much disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember, if we commit sins, first of all, we should be regretful about it. Number two, we should not even, we should not even commit it. But if we do commit it because we are human beings, we seek repentance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we keep it to ourselves and continue to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness because once again, I'm going to repeat what I said earlier. There are consequences for every single sin that we commit. Whether people know about it, people don't know about it, whether they will commit it in, during the daytime, during the nighttime, openly, secretly, everything is acknowledged to Allah, and Allah will hold us accountable for the sins that we commit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the ability to act on this and hurt. Allahumma suri salamu muslimin. Allahumma suri salamu muslimin. Allahumma suri salamu muslimin. Allahumma suri salamu muslimin. Allahumma suri salamu muslimin.